Nothing is more badass than a pistol shrimp. Now I know I use that line a lot, but this is a shrimp the size of my index finger that creates weaponized bubbles that are almost as hot as the surface of the sun in order to get some lunch. Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe and you're watching Animal Logic. The pistol shrimp, or Alphaeidae, are a family of snapping shrimp found all over the world, primarily in tropical and temperate waters. The first thing you might notice about pistol shrimp are their comically asymmetrical claws. A certain Simpsons scene comes to mind. Pistol shrimp are pretty tiny, measuring up to 5 centimeters long, and their large claw is about half of their body length. This claw is where they get their name from. Unlike most shrimp, pistol shrimp don't have pincers at the end of their claw. Instead, they have a mechanism similar to a hammer and anvil. The hammer, called the dactyl, pulls backwards 90 degrees, hinging away from the anvil, called the propus, which never moves. One muscle pulls the dactyl away from the propus, and another pulls them together. This tug of war creates a massive amount of tension that, when released, causes the hammer to fly backwards incredibly fast. The hammer will fly back at speeds of up to 115 kilometers an hour, which is so fast it tears the water apart creating a jet stream. This jet stream creates a small area of low pressure, which is lower than the vapor pressure of the water. Nearby air bubbles will enter this low pressure area, causing them to rapidly expand, creating what's known as a cavitation bubble. This large bubble is surrounded by regular pressured water, which compresses the large bubble, causing it to implode. It's this rapidly collapsing bubble that causes the popping sound you'll hear when they strike, not the hammer and anvil. The collapse of the bubble is absolutely devastating to their prey. For an incredibly brief amount of time and an incredibly small area, the implosion will reach temperatures upwards of 4,000 degrees Celsius. For comparison, lava is 1,000 degrees Celsius and the surface of the sun is 5,500 degrees Celsius. It may not happen for very long and it does not have a very large area of impact, but it's enough to get the job done, dismembering and killing their prey. They've been described in the past as weaponized bubbles. This might explain how Squirtle does any damage at all with his bubble attack. The collapse of the cavitation bubble has an interesting byproduct, sonoluminescence. The bubble emits a flash of light before collapsing, and no one knows why. Not even Rick and Morty fans. The first scientist to observe this phenomenon, Detlef Loos, over a couple of beers, initially named it shrimpoluminescence, and then unfortunately had to change it, which is a real shame because I think it's my new favorite word. Their giant claw is lined with small hairs that can feel the jet streams created by other pistol shrimp as a form of communication, even with neighbors buried away in a den of sand. But no pistol shrimp would be complete without their partners in crime, the goby fish. Pistol shrimp that live in coral reefs often form symbiotic relationships with the goby fish. The two share a den, which the pistol shrimp maintains while the goby keeps a lookout. If danger presents itself, the two will retreat into their burrow. When the two are outside the protection of the burrow, the pistol shrimp will often hold the goby's tail with its antenna. The goby has much better vision, and if it notices anything going awry, it'll wiggle its tail, letting the pistol shrimp know that they should head back to safety. That warms the heart. One of the most interesting species of pistol shrimp is the Sinalpheus regalis which lives off the coast of Australia. These shrimp live in eusocial societies, a very complex social system found only in bees, wasps, ants, naked mole rats, and in this one species of snapping shrimp. This basically means they follow four characteristics. The adults live in groups, they care for babies that aren't their own, not all individuals get to reproduce, and they live with multiple generations. The Sinalpheus regalis live in sponges, in colonies of over 300 members, centered around a single queen. Since they use their snapping for both hunting and communication, these colonies can get loud. The center of a colony has been measured at 210 decibels. For comparison, a chainsaw is only 120 decibels, and a jet engine is about 140 decibels. Much like how the ribbits of tree frogs tend to dominate the airways in the jungle at night, 
Pistol shrimp snapping permeates the tropical shallows, creating a wall of white noise. Divers describe it sounding like a crackling fire or the sound of pouring milk on Rice Krispies. This makes it very difficult to measure acoustics anywhere near a snapping shrimp colony. During the Second World War, the Americans took advantage of this and used pistol shrimp colonies as an acoustic screen to hide their submarines, allowing them to sneak by the hydrophones in Japanese harbors. What animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching! Hey! Hey! I'm here to talk about pistol shrimp! Snap, snippity snaps. <laughs>